Hey, so welcome. Welcome to Worktable Wednesday uh, on Dream and Color 72207. My name is Virginia Porta and I'm an independence demonstrator for Stampin' Up! And together you're going to watch me create some cards, make me, let me see, watch me make mistakes and fix them. So while you're here, I hope you remember or take a minute to check out the website dreamincolor72207.com and if you're interested in purchasing anything from the video this month the videos let me adjust my camera just a scotch um, be sure you use the workshop code 96 kcfvy so that way if you do purchase anything off the um, workshop code I'll send you a little happy in the mail so as I mentioned in the pre the pro primo promo we're gonna be working with shaded summer the stamp set shaded summer and it has accompanying dies that are called summer shadows now let me give you a couple of hints so in the catalog this is in the annual catalog you will see the shaded summer on page 75 this is a beautiful set it's got two two sprays of flowers and then multiple sentiments and when i first saw it i thought okay well that's that's pretty and i kind of went eh, okay it's pretty and moved on didn't really think much about it but then i came back and started looking at it and then and i liked it but to add on to that oh sorry there are fire trucks going by my house because that's what they do we live on a fire route um funny story not really funny yesterday the sirens were going and my husband always looks out to see see this fire trucks go by he said they're going the wrong way they were all headed back up towards the station we figured they must have been out either getting lunch or doing grocery shopping or something so anyway so let me bring up again so here are the here's the stamp set shaded summer and it is a photo paul it's a cling set so what that means is it's the red rubber with the mounting behind it and then in the celebration which you know we're in the middle of celebration which if you spend fifty dollars or more you earn one credit for a celebration item and for every fifty dollars you earn a credit and in this particular iteration of celebration this is these dies that match and coordinate with this stamp set are available for free you can earn these for free just by picking out stamp sets supplies that you would otherwise need and want to have on hand so if you were to spend a hundred dollars on stamps out of any of our active catalogs you can earn this set of dies for free so it's just something to be thinking about in the back of your back of your mind as we move forward so let's get started on the stamping because that's really the fun part of this okay as I mentioned, we're going to use the um, dies, and I almost, excuse me, I also am picking out, I don't know if you've seen this in the annual catalog, this is something that I didn't, I saw it, but then didn't really pay attention to it. Rose gold and gold specialty metallic paper. This is a six by six piece of specialty paper, and let me show it to you up close. I've cut from a couple of pieces so these are somewhat they've got a little bit of a texture to them almost like a brushed texture and the rose gold is that one and then here's the regular gold and they've got a bit of a plastic type coating on the back so let me just tell you right now if you are going to use these in your stamp and cut emboss machine do not I repeat do not cut from the back side you have to cut from the glitter side or sparkly side or whatever you want to call it the sparkly side uh, your stamp and cut and emboss machine does not work well when you do it backwards I tried a couple of different ways today even ran it through a couple of times and that just was not going to be the way to pursue that so uh, in advance of us getting together tonight I have uh, stamped or excuse me stamped I've cut a few things out using the stamp and cut and emboss machine now you may recognize these dies uh, these dies are from the color and contours dies which are called scalloped contours 
and this has a series of frame dies let me get those out from under there so you've seen these used these are wonderful for layering your card fronts this is an excellent way to give some texture and dimension to your card front and then it also comes with a couple of floral cutouts and then the scallops for the side so you may look at this and say well okay virginia i see how you have the um hey barb it means i need to um, so you see that i have this frame and that cut out the gold and you look at the set and you say well virginia there isn't one that cuts out the looped frame excuse me this looped frame at that size and i'll say why you know what you are oh so right so through the magic of getting ready beforehand let me show you how i took this die that cut this layer and you can see this cuts it this is exactly how it cuts it just like that but how i created a smaller layer so we'll put that aside for the time being so right now we're going to test these colors now i've been playing with the blushing bride and the mint macaron this afternoon in getting ready for this class so i'm picking up since this is a little bit different of a color combination and this is really more it's almost more masculine but when you put flowers on there it's hard to say something is masculine in my opinion but you can do it so we are going to pick up the um, smaller of the floral sprays that are come that are part of this set and i am going to what i've done now is i've come back with a tiny ruler i've measured this piece and i know that this piece i ended up cutting this to be two and a half by three and i think five eighths somewhere in that general vicinity you know if you're going to choose if you're going to do something like this you you just kind of have to fiddle with it a little bit and then make sure you write all your dimensions down if you're going to replicate it of course that's true of anything that we do when we decide to replicate so now i have my piece of very vanilla cardstock and i have the small floral image from the stamp set and then i'm using a the sahara sand but i'm only going to stamp i'm going to stamp off and then then i'm going to stamp the spray right here in the middle of this actually towards the top and that gives you sort of a darker brown well it's not dark brown but it's a light brown and as it dries you know that those colors will come together okay now let's see there's my chamois we're gonna clean that out now what i'm gonna do I'm experimenting because you know I love to experiment, especially in, on live broadcasts. Because why not? I mean, it can only go can only go downhill so far, right? I'm going to come back with the blue, the Knight of Navy, and I'm going to offset it just a little bit so that this existing brown will theoretically look like a shadow, and it does. And I, I'm not particularly <laughs> fond of that. <laughs> I don't think that's really what I wanted it to do. So let's come back. Let's just stamp on the back side of that and start all over. All right, so we're going to take this spray and we're going to put it just like that. So that's that. And then I'm going to, oops, going to put on there above and beyond. You go there a lot. Now, you know how these work sometimes that the labels don't go on exactly square or perfectly straight but you know what that's good enough and then i'm going to take the thank you and stamp that on the inside of my card now i'm using a thick vanilla a very vanilla thick card base so I've got that thank you on the inside. And there you have a quick and easy thank you card. Now let's assemble this and put it together. 
So on the front, we will adhere our first layer. Golly, I can't pick anything up today. I don't know what my problem is. And you can sort of see there's a little bit of a sheen on this. So you can see it's got some plastic in it. And I, I like I said, I tried cutting it from the back side, from the paper, the white side. And it did not want to play nice at all. So I will stick this on with one layer. And I'm just going to use my regular stamp and seal. Now for this layer, keep in mind there is a little bit of a um, embossing around the loops. And so you're going to want to make sure that's the side that you have showing or on top. And then just stack this on top of that. And then we're going to apply this with our dimensionals. Now, let me give you a hint. Sometimes when you use paper trimmer, sometimes it'll leave a little bit of a jagged edge on the non-cut side, the, the non-cut side, if there's such a thing, on the side, the, the downside. And so if you flip your paper over, sometimes you have what looks like a sort of a rough edge. So I recommend that you just take your bone folder and run it along the edges with a little bit of pressure. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on there, but a little bit of pressure is going to help finish, I'm going to say finish off, but it does kind of give a nice finish to the edge. Okay, I had my take a pick tool. Oh, it's right there. Gosh, if it was a snake, it would have bitten me. Um, but it helps kind of finish off the edge in case it's a little rough from your trimmer and your trimmer can be rough I leave a rough edge for any number of reasons sometimes it's because you need a new blade sometimes it's because there's uh, paper debris in the in the tray in the little uh, what call the, the crevice where the blade runs sometimes it's just dusty and you just need to take it out and kind of wipe everything down and that does the job so we're going to come back and we're going to stick this right here on top of that. And there you have a very, very simple thank you card with that on the inside. You don't need to put anything else on here. You don't need any embellishments. You don't need any, um, oh, ribbons. I, you know, I thought about putting some ribbons on there, and I really don't think it needs it. So there's your a sim very simple card. And this, this gold paper does really add a nice little bling if you want to call it to the card all right for the next card that we're going to make i also am going to use this this time i'm going to use the rose gold i was like whatever this is uh the rose gold <laughs> on a blank now i want to show this so i cut this out of the cardstock and then i measured the inside and simply trimmed this with my paper trimmer and this still leaves a really kind of an interesting look with this but my question is all right so now what do I do how do I embellish this a little bit and I'm having a little trouble coming up with something so I'm gonna try to maybe do um, I don't know maybe run this all around the side something like that I'm not sure that that's what I want but I'm gonna try that just to give it a little something something that doesn't have right now so we're going to simply take the adhesive and put it on the four corners and then we're just going to tack whoopsie we're going to tack this lace on the corner we put a little bit more adhesive over it wrap it around to the front and then um, bring it back around you don't want to make it too tight you don't want it to be flopping but you also don't want it to be too tight so then we'll just lay it down like that and then trim that off. So I've get, you know, what I've done is I put a little bit of texture on the card, but I haven't taken away from the, the from what's there. So then we'll put a little bit more adhesive over that right there. And we'll do this. And we'll just adhere this inside the frame so now let's clean this off and we're going to use 
the stamp the whatever this is stamp and chamois whatever this thing's called I'm gonna get this to get the blue ink off of here because I'm gonna come back and let me um, I've got my notes my little cheat sheet of things to mention to you guys tonight but just a second let me um, spray that because normally I, I would just wipe it across the stamp and chamois a couple of times and I'd be happy but since I know that I'm going from Knight of Navy which some of us Terry I'm us I'm looking at you have some reservations with working with Knight of Navy um, I've seen her just become she does not like working with Knight of Navy let me just say that I think if the same thing happens to her with Knight of Navy that happens with me with red Although I'm pretty much getting it all over me, but she says whenever she uses it, she has it from one end of her to the other, and I understand that. So I believe on this particular one, we're going to go ahead and use the Blushing Bride, and we will stamp that, the Blushing Bride on this piece of very vanilla now something i'll point out because these are cling mount stamps and they're red rubber with the padding beneath them i don't have to put anything down on my table to stamp and some of you may remember when i use the photopolymers we have to have something beneath it to help cushion it to provide a, a better impression so all right let's grab our stamp and cut and emboss machine let's put that up here let's see if i got enough room there we go and we are going to grab the summer shadows dies and these are the ones that are in the celebration catalog and we are going to trim or going to use the dies to cut this spray of flowers so we're just going to line that up and as let's see and you know when we're working on this you just kind of fiddle it around till you think you've got it even margins around the image and this would be a great one if you're interested in doing it this way because you've already stamped the image and it is a little detailed in places Go ahead and grab you a piece of washi after you get it where you want it. Get you a piece of washi tape and just barely tack it. And I say be sure you tack it on the outside of the image. You don't want the washi tape on the stamped image because sometimes that washi tape has a tendency to be a little sticky and it will sometimes stick to what you've cut. So keep an eye on it as it goes through the machine and make sure it's not wobbling or moving around on you as it comes as it goes through so now we have that floral accent let me put this aside that might have fit through the smaller cut and emboss machine but I did not check. I knew that the other ones I worked with today were larger, especially the frames, and so I did not do that today. So we will take this, and we can adhere that right like that. We'll use this, we will adhere this with dimensionals. I'm using the mini dimensionals tonight. Just in case you're curious, yes, I do have full-size dimensionals. But these were out and easily accessible. So today I was running errands and I went to the container store looking to help straighten up my husband's desk downstairs, which is in our den and is um, where he does all of his computer work. But it's in the den and it's right there in front of everybody so we've got that on there now so what we still need is a sentiment so let's take our piece of very vanilla cardstock and we'll put the die up and there are several really nice sentiments in this set and I really like this one may the good 
you do come back to you. So this is another one of these cards that would be a great thank you. So we will take this. I'm going to clean this because this is the over and above and beyond, which I've already used that a couple of times on cards tonight. Let's put that away. So may the good you do come back to you. You know, that's often, I think it's true that if you do nice things or do good, do, do for others, then it does come back to you and it comes back to you in good ways. So we're going to stamp this at the base of this very vanilla cardstock in the blushing bride. Now, something that I want to show you, and this is all about, you know, I am all about how to get the most out of your dies, get the most variety, you know, the most flexibility out of your dies, out of your um, mm -hmm, punches and those types of things. So that particular one doesn't work, and you'll see what I did with that in a minute. Let's see if there's another one over here that will be effective for this. I think at this point I probably will simply need to trim this to one inch and then we will put it on our lovely labels um, and do it that way. So I'm kind of eyeballing that. Now my other favorite trick is when I'm trying to do something to one inch in this trimmer particularly it's hard to get it perfectly lined up and so I grab a post-it and I line up my paper and I use the post-it as a handle. Ow! I just pinched my finger. So that gives you the sentiment is basically centered. So I'm going to put that in this more of a Let's see. I remember if you take your paper with the sentiment down, you can flip it over and make sure that it is not getting into your stamped sentiment and also gives you a chance to make sure it's straight. And then we'll take it and do it this way. There you have that. Oopsie. There you have that sentiment on your card front. Let me see, let's put that post-it up there. My little handle. So now we can put this on the card front as well, with also with the dimensionals. And let's see. So Barbie, have you never taken your dies and cut them down or tried to work with them to cut them down like that? Once you do it, it's a little addictive because you're like, oh, that's so cool. I can do this. I can do this. And you end up doing it way more, probably more than you should. So let's, and I may be using too many dimensionals based on some people's estimation of dimensional, appropriate dimensional use, but they're small. And so I do want to use more than, if these were the full size dimensionals, I would have only used the four corners and one in the center. But like I said, these are smaller, so I have a tendency to use a few more. All right, so we will mat this with dimensionals on our card base. And there we go, make sure it's going the right direction. Okay, so there's the second card. Now the third card tonight, I, um, if we have time, I'm going to come back and stamp with this. Again, I'm using the rose gold. It does so well with the Blushing Bride, but I am holding off on this until um, actually no I'll go ahead and take care of this and do it now and so all I'm going to do at this point is take 
um, there is a piece of foliage in this set that is really good for, I don't call it filler, but that's basically what it is. You can see it's the spray of the little limbs. I don't know if those are berries or exactly what that is, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick up the Sahara sand and we're going to stamp off and just very lightly stamp around the base, the front of the card base to get some dimension and some interesting patterns. And we're going to do this with the crumb cake. And then we're going to come back and do this with the blushing bride. And remember, when you're doing random stamping like this, turn your card, or excuse me, turn your stamp and turn your card. If you can't turn one, turn the other. Because you don't want it to all look lined up. Now we'll come back with the Blushing Bride. I'm going to stamp this off here. That should do. Nope, I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down. It's always a good habit to go ahead and wipe it off with your chamois because, I mean, you can bring back a stamp pad if you get dark ink on a lighter colored stamp pad. It takes a little bit of work, and what you do is, the first thing you do is you re-ink it with the original color that you want it to be, but then you um, you work with that, and then you, mas you massage that in as if you were trying to massage out when... You remember how we do sometimes if it's a, an over inked pad, over inked ink pad, there's that makes sense. Yeah. So all we're doing is I'm doing the same thing with this blushing bride that I did with the Sahara sand, just adding some dimension and texture to the front of this pack card. And this is a great way to do, and it looks like you've added a layer, but if you are concerned about putting too many layers in, or you just don't want to, or you don't particularly like, you don't have the designer series paper that goes with this, or you don't like the ones you have, or the ones you have aren't the quite the right color, this gives you the opportunity to create this in a manner that suits you and that's great because this is your craft this is your creation and that goes back to there is no right there's no wrong and nobody's gonna tell you you did it wrong when you're doing it yourself okay so let's close the ink and we're going to close that. we'll come back and we'll add this to the front We've got that on there. Now we need to have a piece of very vanilla to do a sentiment. What we could do, hmm. No, I'm sorry, I've just drawn a blank. Um, let me find my very vanilla piece of cardstock. It's on the floor over here. Okay, so this particular sentiment is, let's see. So we could do a couple of things. We could cut this out, we could cut out the center. We could adhere a piece like we've done on this other card, like that. In fact, why don't we do that? I've lost my little... Oh, there's my ruler. So let me double check the measurements. So uh, while this is a, a lovely ruler and I love it, it's in tenths of an inch, not eighths. And so I have to do a little math on the fly. So I'm going to say two and a half, uh, two and five eighths by three and seven eighths. So let me write that down. 
two and five eighths by three and seven eighths. Okay, so let's get my trimmer. I'm gonna do three and seven eighths off of this side. And then two and five eighths. Two, four eighths, five eighths. Five eighths is an easy measurement for me because I grew up sewing and five eighths was always the seam allowance. And so I have no problem finding five eighths. And of course it's so very close to a half an inch. And I always wondered who decided five eighths? I mean, really? That was kind of an arbitrary decision, I think. Maybe it was right, maybe it was wrong. I don't know. Okay, so at this point, why don't we do the same thing we did with the blue, but let's use the Blushing Bride. And we will stamp this in the center. And then we will take our, um, let's see, where's our brush for browns, our brown brush, okay. So let's do this, a little bit of what we did last week with um, putting ink on the edges, just using the blender brushes. And again, this is not a Stampin' Up! blender brush because I've had this one for a while. But I do have the Stampin' Up! blender brushes, and I love them. But I'm sticking with the same color scheme. So this is the Sahara Sand that we used to stamp the front of the card with the Blushing Bride. And then on the sentiment, let's do, let's do happy birthday. That's another good thing about this set is that it has a lot of variety in the sentiments. And so you've got thank you, hello you, happy birthday. So you've got quite a bit of variety. And so you can really get a lot out of it. Okay, and we're going to do this in the Sarah Hare, Sahara Sand. I just have happy birthday there. Okay, so now it's time to assemble our card. And once again, I'm going to use just the stamp and seal to place this. DSP on the card. I'm going to set it inside our little frame that we've made. And then we'll take the happy birthday and let's go ahead and we will mat that. Oh, that's not straight on that card. Ooh, sorry. That's all of a sudden. I was like, that is not straight. Let's see. Well, that's going to be it. And then we will use the dimensionals to pop this up. And then when I finish with this, I'm going to show you the other two cards I made. And I want you to remember to never have a naked envelope. So after you put your cards together, it really does give you a nice finished look if you come back and ever so subtly decorate your envelope. So let's put this on here like that. All right, so here are the three cards that we've made tonight. Let's show those to you. And there's a lot of, you know, heavy with the color and contour dies that we've used. But here are the three that we've made tonight. Now, along with these three, there are these other two that I made this afternoon. So this is using the Blushing Bride, 
with the white and gold. This is the B side of the Expressions in Ink paper. And this is the other spray, and I've used the opal embellishments. I've used the um, I've used this punch, the Everyday Label Punch, above and beyond. You go there a lot, but then what I did is after I stamped it, I used the post-it note and I lined it up and I trimmed off this part between here and here. Let's see what, if you can see that. Yeah, so it's where this little nick is. And so I've trimmed that part off and I trimmed off this part, which gives you a little bit different look to your embellishment. And this uses the rest of the dies that are in that set to come up with the multiple layers of the flowers. And all I did with this was I took the large spray and I stamped off and I did second generation stamping and created a sort of a damask background and then stamped the sentiment on the mint macaron and then rounded the edges and put that on the front so this is a very simple card it's only one layer so this but it doesn't look simple because you've added all the things on the front so here are the two cards that i made prior to the class to the broadcast and here's the envelope. I said no naked envelopes. So all this is is the scent, just that spray in the corner. And then also I did it on the back of the flap. So that way when you get ready to seal it, your envelope looks finished that way as well. So I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight. It went a little bit longer than I expected and I apologize for that. But we did manage to make three, three more cards. And I think these are all really pretty cards that we could use for a class. This would be a great thing for you to create two of each of these perhaps and put these in a set as a gift. We've got the acetate boxes that you can use so you can create five, six, eight, ten, however many. Add the envelopes and this would be a lovely Christmas gift for a friend that uses a lot of cards. So these are ideas of things that you can do. So if you are so inclined, don't forget if you want to order, uh, this is the workshop code for August, 2021. So I do want to ask you to please, if you do enjoy this video, please like it, share it to your feed, go back and follow the Dream in Color 72207 page. And if you're not a member yet of the VIP group, please uh, send me a, a, a request to join the group. That way, it's a free group, and you'll be the first to be in the know for when we have specials, and if I uh, release, or not if, but when I release some tutorials and those types of things. If you also are interested, please drop a DM to me with your email address, and you can join my mailing list. And always, check out my other channels on Pinterest, YouTube, and of course, Facebook. But more than anything else, if you have any need that I can help you with at all, with your paper crafting needs, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I would love to be able to help you. All right. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.